Sciatica is the term used to describe pain along the distribution of the sciatic nerve, from the lower back and radiating down the leg. It is a form of lumbar radiculopathy, where lumbar refers to the lower back, and radiculopathy meaning irritation of the nerve roots coming out of the spine. Free practice material on sciatica and other videos is available through Wisdolia, including multiple choice questions, flashcards, and case scenarios that give you feedback as you answer them. Find the link below. In normal circumstances, nerve roots exit via foramina in the spine. The sciatic nerve specifically coming from a collection of nerve roots between L4 and S3, forming the largest nerve in the body that is roughly 2 cm thick. The sciatic nerve runs through the pelvis and posterior thigh, splitting into the tibial and common fibular nerves at the popliteal fossa in the knee. In sciatica, these nerve roots become irritated, leading to symptoms perceived along the path of the sciatic nerve. The most common cause of irritation of these nerve roots is compression due to herniation or bulging of an intervertebral disc. These discs are made up of the nucleus pulposus, a gelatinous substance in the centre, surrounded by the annulus fibrosus, and in herniation the nucleus pulposus herniates through the annulus fibrosus, with 90% of cases happening at L5-S1. Other causes include bony irregularities like osteoarthritic osteophytes or spondylolisthesis, where a vertebrae itself slips relative to its neighbour. Lumbar spinal stenosis, meaning narrowing of the spinal canal, can also be a cause, particularly in more elderly patients, and rarer causes include tumours and abscesses. Causes external to the spine can also cause it such as muscular spasm or inflammation in the pelvis or buttocks. Around 1 in 50 people are affected per year, with a lifetime incidence of around 40%. It can come on suddenly after a particular movement, such as bending, or it can be more gradual, and is more common in those who have awkward working positions, undertake strenuous physical activity, or those subjected to whole body vibration like driving or using machinery. Typical symptoms include leg pain radiating along the sciatic nerve path. The pain is described as burning or sharp, usually. Tingling or numbness is also common, and back pain may or may not be present. If it is, it is often less severe than the leg pain. Weakness in the affected leg is also possible. Coughing, spinal flexion, or the Valsalva manoeuvre may worsen the pain in the cases of disc herniation, while worsening on extension of the spine is more suggestive of spinal stenosis. Reflexes, particularly the ankle jerk if L5-S1 is affected, and patella at L3 to L4 may be reduced. The straight leg raise involves lying supine and passively raising the affected leg by flexing the hip with the knee extended. If the symptoms are reproduced before 60 degrees of hip flexion, including radiating leg pain, this is considered a positive straight leg test or a SEG sign, suggesting lumbosacral radiculopathy as a result of disc herniation, particularly at L5 and S1 level. And there may also be reproduction when the contralateral leg is raised felt down the affected leg, called a crossed straight leg test, suggesting disc herniation with nerve root irritation. Red flag symptoms that suggest an alternative diagnosis or need for urgent intervention include bilateral nerve involvement, incapacitating pain or night pain that does not settle, saddle anesthesia, meaning a lack of sensation in the region of the perineum, and any bladder or bowel dysfunction, the most common being urinary retention. Progressive neurological weakness, use of intravenous drugs, fever or steroids are also considered red flags. These symptoms could indicate corda equina syndrome, 
where there is compression of the tail end of the spinal cord or could indicate a spinal fracture or even malignancy, and factors like intravenous drug use predisposed to infections and abscess formation. Sciatica is a clinical diagnosis, meaning it is usually made based on the history and physical exam, and if any neurological deficits persist over six weeks, should be further evaluated through imaging like MRI or CT. This is also the case if there is diagnostic uncertainty. Sciatica will typically spontaneously resolve in four to six weeks of self-management, which involves encouragement of continuation of normal activities as prolonged bed rest is not recommended and can increase the risk of recurrence. Heat can be applied locally that may promote muscle relaxation and relieve pain. And according to the NICE guidelines, analgesia is recommended, particularly short-term non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, and paracetamol may be used alongside this, but is not recommended alone. If non-steroidal anti-inflammatories are contraindicated, codeine may be used with or without paracetamol. NICE advice to avoid gabapentinoids and benzodiazepines, while in other countries like the United States, there is some use of these medications. Tools like the Start Back tool can help gauge the risk of the pain and recovery being prolonged, with higher risk cases being considered for group exercise physiotherapy and cognitive behavioural therapy. It is expected that with adequate first-line measures that there will be an improvement within four weeks. In cases of unequivocal disc herniation that is causing progressive symptoms or not resolving, or corda equina syndrome, surgical treatment is indicated, mostly in the form of a discectomy with laminotomy.